Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. There is a lot to discuss this week, so I'm going to jump straight into things by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday, February the 6th. At the outset, there are heavy outbreaks of rain, strong winds just clearing southwards and behind them, much colder air. And that's going to be a big player through the first week, this cold, mild boundary, because what we see as I run the sequence is outbreaks of rain through Wednesday and Thursday push up from the southwest and they turn to sleet or snow on their leading edge. Exactly where that boundary will be is quite difficult to pin down, but it looks like central England, Wales and parts of northern England are most at risk from seeing some snow, but I'm going to have a more in-depth look at that a little bit later on. In the days which follow, low pressure stays close by, so it's a messy picture, rain, sleet and snow at times, the snow mostly becoming restricted to the north, but towards the end of the week, the area of low pressure pulls away eastwards and colder conditions return down across all parts of the UK. Lots of uncertainty though about how things will develop through the second half of the period in particular. Here is the upper air temperature sequence associated with the same computer model run. Blues and purples to the north there show the cold air mass. Yellows and oranges to the south, mild or warm. As I run this, we see the boundary is often straddling the UK, moving northwards and then later on southwards once more. So it's where that boundary lies which will determine the areas most at risk from snow. In terms of temperatures down at the ground level, forecast maximums here on Wednesday. Early in the week, really, all of the country, or virtually all of it, under that colder air mass, so single figures even in the south, five, sixes or sevens, lower values though as you head north. Now, moving forwards to Thursday, this really shows a very, very steep temperature gradient indeed. The yellows in the south air showing values of 11, 12 or even 13 Celsius, but just a little bit further north into the Midlands, northern England, temperatures are struggling to climb above freezing points. It's very, very, very steep temperature gradient indeed. Moving forwards to Friday, not a great deal has changed. A little bit milder here into eastern England, perhaps East Anglia there, mild, but still it's a cold or very cold picture in the north. Forwards to Sunday, the milderer has now made inroads and it's covering much of England, particularly central and eastern parts of it. It remains colder there in Northern Ireland and Scotland. Then by the end of the week, so Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, that colder air has returned southwards to all parts of the UK, single figures even in central and southeastern counties there. So lots taking place through the first week and that's really emphasised by the Morgrep's Tree Ensemble plot, this one for London, showing forecast temperatures, the cold air at the start of a period, but then the milder conditions return, so double figures on several days, but towards the end, temperatures are dipping once more, so reinforcing the general pitch which the GFS sequences were highlighting. Leeds, this shows the colder conditions, so Leeds staying on the northern side of the boundary between cold and mild air masses, at least for time. But then it looks like, although there is a big spread here, it looks as though temperatures will be rising there at least for a time. Towards the end of the week, there's a big spread, colder conditions perhaps, as I said, returning here as well. So colder air returning southeastwards across all parts of the UK towards the end of the first week, but it's that fluctuating boundary which really will determine, determine the weather which large parts of England and Wales at least experience. Here's the UKV um, snow and rainfall sequence through uh, Thursday and Friday. It's just, I'm just using it to highlight the general picture. The key thing is that the snow risk looks most likely to be in Wales, Central and Northern England, and then it turns back to rain in, those, in central parts of England and Wales, at least through Friday, and the risk of snow increasingly becomes confined on this to Scotland. In terms of the depth of snow, the accumulations which can be expected, once more from the UKV, North Wales there, 
and central parts of England on Thursday, the chart on the left. Increasingly, as we go through Friday, it looks as though the snow risk in England and Wales will become restricted to higher ground. So the mountains of North, North Wales and the Pennines there in Northern England, perhaps still the Peak District too. Both of those indicate significant accumulations of snow are possible in much of Scotland on both days. Of course, the risk up there always going to be a lot higher as we go through this week because Scotland is most likely to be staying on the northern side of that cold, mild boundary. But there are other models, of course. This shows the forecast snow depths from the GFS, which the sequences were based on. It looks as though it's got the can of spray paint out here because the snow risk is more extensive across central and northern regions. But I think in large part, the GFS does have a tendency to overdo things. Also, it's lower resolution means there are fewer grid points, so the snow appears to be covering a bigger area than on the higher resolution models such as the UKV, which I just showed. But I think on both of these, what we see is that the snow risk really starts from around Birmingham northwards. And finally, the, in terms of the deterministic snow risk model charts, the German icon, this one closer to the UKV, if anything, it's showing less snow from the UKV did on the left there Thursday afternoon on the right Friday. So the general pattern though is similar. The largest accumulations on all these deterministics appear to be of course over the high ground in Northern Wales, the Peak District and the Pennines, but I think even at lower levels in parts of central and Northern England, several centimetres of snow could be recorded in places, so enough for some disruption. But it's really, I think, the high level routes which are going to have the biggest problems. Just a quick look at the Mogrex G and GEFS uh, snow stamps for Thursday, Thursday evening, so 18 GMT on both of these. Maybe you want to freeze the video and look through them individually because there are quite significant differences between the two. GEFS on the left, I think with a lower resolution, once more showing the snow accumulations to be covering a bigger area and also showing them generally to be more substantial than Mogrex G on the right. Well, with all that precipitation around, rainfall through days 0 to 10 is going to be significant. I didn't really emphasize that, but in parts of southern England, as we can see here, there are some large totals to look out for. So I wouldn't be entirely surprised if across the southern half of the UK, flooding may also become an issue at times, at least locally. Well, lots going on, as I've been saying. So how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 13th, the cold air covering virtually the whole view at this point, but it's probably worth emphasizing that it's not very, very cold air. That's further northeast still, so it's just rather cold, especially at this time of year with the days beginning to lengthen, maximum values in the afternoon tend to creep up when the sun shines, of course, unless there's a really cold air mass, for example, like we saw in the Beast from the East spell, February, March 2018. The Canadian model at the same time, quite a messy picture, areas of low pressure close to the UK. The light blue or green shading there just indicates a rather cold upper level air mass. The German icon, well, this has a southwesterly flow beginning to return. There's some very, very warm air to the southwest for time of year, but still quite a long way off at this point. But temperatures would be recovering if it's correct. Conversely, the European ECM has the area of low pressure just drifting away eastwards, weakening, and colder air returning south across all parts of the UK. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, a similar sort of picture, but a ridge of high pressure building in, the low pressure there a tad further east, quite a chilly picture, I would say, for risk of frost and mostly dry. So taking them all together, Towards the end of the first week, I think the favoured scenario is for it to be rather cold, the risk of frost becoming more widespread, probably dry in a much of UK by this point. However, there could still be a few wintry showers around, particularly in the north and northeast. 
So how do things develop as we go through week two? Of course, trends and probabilities at this range, not the details, as I've already discussed, there's a good deal of uncertainty about the details even through the second half of the first week. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. A lot of runs there showing air temperatures at the 850 HPA level to be below the 30-year average, which is highlighted by the thick black line through the first few days, but they are creeping upwards. There is a big spread though later on. There are still some very cold runs in the mix, but the majority are bringing back milder air, probably from the south to southwest with high pressure becoming centered a little bit further east over continental Europe. That's a bit speculative on my part, but I think that's a general picture which many are showing. And that's also reinforced by the precipitation signal. It's dry early on, but the number of spikes there increases later. So the chance of rain starts to return. In terms of two meter temperatures, the data tables here, lots of dark green early on, more than 50% in the first few days in those columns. So those are runs going for maximums between one and five. So rather cold, you know, potentially cold indeed, according to some of these runs. The amount of dark green though decreases later, the amount of light green and yellows starts to rise. So the trend there is towards milder conditions, nighttime lows, a reasonable amount of blue, so a significant number of runs going for sub-zero overnight lows, air frost, and most are showing the possibility of ground frost on some nights, although later on it starts to, the frost risk starts to recede as well. Up to Manchester, it's a very, very similar pattern, so I won't really uh, spend too much time discussing this. The snow across the bottom though through the second week stays quite low but not very low. It's not The risk of snow hasn't gone entirely through week two. Fives or sixes about 20%, 25% maximum on any individual day. The two meter temperature data tables from Manchester a very very similar pattern to London. Probably just worth saying though early on there's quite a lot more blue in the columns, the overnight lows, so a greater chance of frost, possibly some quite sharp frosts through the first half of week two. Up to Glasgow, actually very similar once more. Air temperatures at the 850 HPA level, below the 30 year norm to begin with, but rising as we go through the second week. But once more, just highlighting that very, very big spread, which begins to show its hand there indicating a good deal of uncertainty. So colder outcomes are still possible even through the second half of each second week. Precipitation, the signal similar to the Manchester and London plots, not very much different at all there. The two meter temperature data table for Glasgow, lots of blue on the overnight low. So, and, and really the amount of blue there stays quite high through the second week. So an ongoing risk of frost, it, decreases a little bit, but I, I would expect there to be some fairly sharp, maybe even severe frosts for a time in parts of the north through particularly the, the second half of the, uh, through the first half of the second week. But the general trend in terms of daytime temperatures is for it to turn a little bit milder later on. Here is the GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Friday the 16th of February, so 10 days lead time at the time of filming. It's pointing towards high pressure being sent just to the northeast of the UK. I think it looks as though there is that possibility of an easterly here, but the cold air is probably going to be a long way to the east of the UK, so we could have fairly raw conditions, as I say, through the days early on, but the deep cold air, which we experienced, for example, during the uh, Beast from East period in 2018, which I've already referenced, is going to be quite a long way from the UK's shores. The European ensemble shows something similar, maybe a greater chance of colder air from the east feeding in, but all in all, probably a mostly dry picture through the first half of week two and rather cold with that frost risk. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, so we're going through week two, also reinforces the idea that high pressure will be very influential, for at least through the first half of the period. 
The oranges there showing runs going for between 1,026 and 1,040 millibars, so well above the average. But the amount decreases towards the very end, pointing perhaps towards a more changeable pattern, beginning to push in from the west. So, to summarise, week one, after a mostly dry and chilly start, outbreaks of heavy rain push northwards, and as they bump into the cold air, they turn to sleet and snow in places. Areas most at risk are central and northern England and northern Wales. Accumulations are possible even at low levels for a time, but the heaviest falls are likely to be reserved for higher ground, so particularly higher parts of the Pennines, the Peak District and the mountains of northern Wales, where 15, 20 or even 25 centimetres of snow is possible. In the days which follow, the boundary between cold and mild air masses fluctuates. Initially it moves northwards, but by the end of the week it probably returns southwards. Therefore, frosts become more widespread towards the end of the period. It also turns drier as low pressure pulls away eastwards. The early part of week two continues with a similar theme, so rather chilly, with night frosts being widespread. Towards the end, though, there is a chance that temperatures will be rising and more changeable conditions returning from the west, so a greater risk of rain. With that said, the computer models are showing different scenarios as possibilities by this point, of course. Some bring in very cold air from the east, the northeast. Others bring in a very mild air from the southwest. So lots to play for through week two. And in the summary there, I've just highlighted what I think is the most likely scenario. It is not definite. So there we have it. Lots of weather taking place through the next two weeks. A good deal of uncertainty about the details. But at long last, snow is in the forecast in the southern half of the UK. I think at low levels it could well be quite an underwhelming affair, particularly in central parts of England. Nonetheless, I'm sure lots of snow lovers will welcome anything they can take this winter. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. As usual, if you found it useful and enjoyed it, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And of course, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much for watching now. Bye.